see with a great sense of relief that Celtic are back in their own patch after two and different weekends at Dundee and faced today by a club which of the Premier Division has to mean anything at all must mount a serious challenge to the old firm. Well, that challenge is met today by a Celtic side, which is, of course, minus Paul Lambert and Vida Reset, but Craig Burley is in from the start. And Jackie McNamara returns to first-team duty today for the first time since last April when he was in the side which lost 1-0 to St. Johnson in a game that effectively cost him the league championship. And with that in mind, he'll certainly be raring to go today. Well, Hodge certainly slumped against Rangers but returned to form against Sibs and Aberdeen. But today, Jim Jeffries has put Stefan Adam on the bench. Gary Locke is in the side. And congratulations to Gary McSweegan, scorer of five goals this season and picked now for the Scottish squad. Well, one of his great strikes was for Rangers against Marseille in 92 in the Champions League. Well, the referee today, getting a little thin at top, is Jim McCluskey. Well, a couple of hours before kickoff, the heavens really opened in Glasgow, and the pitch took a real hammering. But I think uh, it certainly could stand it and looks in almost perfect nick. However, I, I think the surface is going to be tricky and, and slippy, and the first touch very important, especially for Hearts, who have only won twice at Celtic Park in 30 years. So the challenge is really on for them. Lost away against the Rangers, began to assert themselves in the last couple of games I saw them play. Corner kick. Right into the heart of the penalty area, and I think a bit of a pushing there by Scott Severin, who came right into the box. It's a young man who played a, a considerable role last week against Aberdeen. Very committed player, as he showed there, slightly overcommitted. Beautifully judged ball of Vaduka. Russia. And just away, brilliant Celtic attacking. Superb ball put in the path of Viduka. Uh, McNamara. Watch this immaculate pass by Moravchik. He looks up, line of defenders in, and he slips it to the outside, allowing Viduka the enterprise to get out there for it, and he did. the way he can find space for players but actually Burley there's an opening this time brilliantly saved by Rose you would have bet on Feduka putting this away the goalkeeper did very well I, I think he probably didn't angle it enough away from the goalkeeper at that time he didn't have much time to think but he went for it and the goalkeeper stretching out to push it away was so late it, it wasn't as if Berkovic had done anything special like uh, give him a little dummy it just took him Mahe his attacking caused panic and that Dundee defence last week And Jackson, the ball played behind him, though. There's a lovely ball, that's it. Paducah, brilliantly set up by Larson. And just as well, the net was there, and that would have ended up in the crowd. Tremendous part in the header. And Larson, in a one-to-one, -one, is always likely to spin somebody. He certainly did it to Naismith, laying it right on the head of the big Australian. And bang into the net it goes. Watch the pace on the drive of that. Scorer for Celtic was number 36, Mark Paduka. And Swigan won of the pace to beat Tebele. Well, he gets away from Tebele. Can he put it in? Just passed. He could have cut it back to Cameron. Well, it wasn't pace which overcame Tebele there. It 
the central defender simply fumbled it all. Got his legs in a fankel and McSwagan was going to try that from an almost impossible angle. Of course, he would have been a great hero had it come off, but Colin Cameron was lying just in the side of it. Uh, Olivia Tibbley almost sold the jerseys. Kibaduka going on a run and a little bit too late by Burnley that time. There's Colin Cameron. Now Jackson. That's a uh, free kick, I think. No doubt about that. Taken quickly. Jackson. Here's McSwigan going on the outside. There's a shot. And that's the first real constructive attempt at goal. Leaving aside that slip by Tivoli. The free kick quickly taken. Then touched to the outside. Nice ball. And fired across goal by McSwigan. It was a difficult angle again. McSwigan comes away. Tebele was a little bit late. He's caught out of position now. Oh, the final pass again, letting Hearts down. And no wonder Dana Jackson's annoyed with Presley. The pass had to be better than that. There's Larson. He must put it away again, and he does. Simple, clinical. Two touches from midfield. Wonderful vision by Beduka to allow his colleague to run onto that. And just at a time when Hodge looked as if he might break forward. Look at this superb play by Beduka. He looks up outside of the foot. And it can be made look so easy. But it never is, of course touch of artistry there nine minutes to have time and hearts now in dire straits definitely right in there again right. Bergovic not far away Bending down to that, Grant Murray. He had little option. Watch how dangerous this curved ball can be to a defence. And yes, the only way out. Yeah, it's gone from Stubbs. That's an excellent save by the goalkeeper. Now this is textbook stuff again for the big defender up and the header down the way making it difficult for the goalkeeper, but he was the equal of it. And it is again and off Jackson. They're appealing that that was an arm use, but the referee says no. So he's been right in the thick of it. Let's watch this one. Stubbs again. I think chest and arm. He won't believe it. Swigan. Oh. Once again, a disappointing ending for Hearts that time. Berkovic in a very ominous position for Hearts. Wants to go on his own, I think. He's going to let fly. Without any question, his most significant contribution to the game thus far. Solo effort here. He had different uh, options open to him, decided there to go for it himself. Scooping just underneath it. Boravchik. Once again, Murray caught out by Pace. And I think lying a little bit too close. To Henry Larson, allowing Larson that little spurt to take him in for the shot. He didn't really hit that properly.
Yolby. Baravchik seeing the opening on the right-hand side. Larson going just inside him. But I think uh, Baduka, when he got that ball from uh, Moravchik, he decided to go for it himself. And there goes the halftime whistle, ending on a high note for Celtic. Rapturous applause, and no wonder from the Celtic support, for apart from a 15-minute period, when it seemed to me that Moravchik and Berkovic disappeared, Celtic have been totally in command of this game. And it's been a case of wonderful cooperation between the two front runners. Just watch the way that uh, Larson combined with Baduka for the first one. There was no doubt about where this was going to end up, as it did. Tremendous head of that one. And then this uh, excellent play leading to the goal by Larson. Gwen Hartz had been coming back into it. Nice little ball forward and then Larson right in on the goalkeeper who looked fragile. Couldn't stop that. A Celtic going at halftime leading by two goals to nil. 2-0 down to Celtic in front of an ecstatic and full house. And Celtic playing in full flood. How do you go about sorting that one out? Well, I'm glad I'm not Jim Jeffries in the dressing room at halftime. Trying to get his plans re-established. But what he has done practically is bring on number 15, Jose Katongo. Little lad with a lot of skill. And Stefan Adam. He's been playing so well since the start of the season. And at least he's going to have a fling at this Celtic defence because Hearts really have lacked conviction. Certainly no comparison with what Celtic have been doing as witness that ball played in and coming for the first time into the box since the start of the game. The man who loves doing it, Craig Burley, just glancing that away. he wanted that played back to him Burley coming forward just a little bit more now Burley now Berkovic can certainly hit them from there as he did against the United that time he didn't get it angled away and higher as he did on that occasion and Rousset was able to watch this coming all the way through a little bit of curl at the end not much more just Try to get a little one-two there from McSwegan. Hearts try to be much more adventurous, and they desperately need to be. Too obvious there from Naismith. Viduka. Look again for Larson Berkovic. The recipient of that, and it's beyond everybody. Viduka did come in late. But Flogo there. Once again, these diagonal quick one-twos. Ripping this Hearts defence apart. But this time, Flogo getting in for the last touch. Near post. Mjolby is there. Beautifully brought down. Crowd rising to Moravchik. He wants skill in Scottish football. Perhaps you have to go to a broad to get the likes of this. Now picked up by Jackson, a little bit of room for him. Stefan Adam. Kitongo. Another Kitongo scoring a last-minute equaliser for Hearts against Celtic a couple of seasons ago. That's a better tackle by Presley Berkovic. Almost getting away. Look at that, how slow they are to clear the lines. Larson could finish it off here. Rusi getting out to him. Maybe just slightly overhead that in Berkovic was slow. Once again, they survive, but another classic uh, illustration of how Larson, given a little bit of leeway, can cause so much damage. That's pushed by Adam. Is Burley. Well read by Presley, but look, he was left stranded again. Nobody coming to his aid. All he could do was pop it out.
McNamara. Bergovic. There's a one two again, and it paid off. Well, Hearts really had a bit of luxury there. Nobody needed to touch that. The one two again was very obvious, not at all read well by the Hearts defense, but there they could only stand and watch. Very hard, I think. Um, a rather forlorn looking Hearts management team there because I, I, I think although they've tightened up a little bit they haven't really caught this Celtic defence out at all Presley Cameron after this now Cameron more Hearts players getting forward. That's a better run by Cameron. And McSwagan not sharp enough coming in to give him support. More constructive play, Katongo. Well, he dived, and he's going to be booked for that. He was looking for the penalty. Now, there was a little contact, but uh, that was like the start of the 100 meters butterfly. Richie, solid with the head. And that tackling, incisive and uh, very significant in this game. As I said uh, earlier on, in the first half, Celtic were winning all the 50-50 balls. Now, Moravchik, his favourite side here, good support, Mahe. Look at that ball, and Rousset is there. This must be it. Too many bodies in again. They can't put it away. Mahe is offside. And Mahe throwing the ball away like that is tempting Providence, if not the referee. Well, he's been already booked, and, you know, that's dangerous. Whatever the case, right or wrong, to show petulance here, given an initial yellow card, is... Very dangerous, to say the least. Look at the pace of Berkovic. There's Mahe. Delighted with that one, and credit to Mahe. I think uh, if he had gone down, he would have got a penalty, but he decided to sweep it over. And Berbic, Berkovic coming in from the back. This is the important bit here. Another player might have gone for the penalty, but he decided that Berkovic, in that good position, would finish it off, and he certainly did. 25 minutes of the second half gone, and that puts it beyond any doubt whatsoever. Well, it was coming. You could sense it in the last 10 minutes, and I said they could have doubled their tally. a little touch back getting to the outside and in for Berkovic two goals in two minutes for the Israeli international and then the classic example of a man who can come in at the right time even though a penalty area is crowded and put the finishing touches look how delicate the box. That was certainly put back conveniently by the touch of the goalkeeper, but he was there to take advantage. Now 4 0.
Stubbs. Man of the match, Alan Stubbs. Mahi taken right out of it. Flugel goes down as Maggie going to let fly himself. He slightly overdid it. Remember, he scored last week. Butcho. Well, it always seems a little bit unfair at Butcho to come on so late in the game, try to get into it. It's not at all easy. And Flogel is certainly in trouble here. Well, it did look serious at the time, but you can see the twist there. It looks as if he might just get up again, but no, he was in serious trouble, holding just behind his knee. And tragically for him for hearts coming on is number he's four. finished hope it's not too Stephen serious Fulton. but he was in great distress Kitongo. keeping sticking at it and he does get a free kick out of it well McSweegan is actually complaining at something uh, or somebody more accurately at impeded him in the penalty area. Anyway, free kick and the two big Celtic defenders there. No chance for Katonga at the back. Here's Blinken. Down the outside, but that's the final whistle, well, the game might have uh, petered out because Celtic, after four goals, decided that was that. Time for a rest. Uh, an act of charity, I may say, on this hard side, which was really taken apart far too often for their own health in this match. Two glorious goals to start with, and the combination between the two with Larson providing the ammunition for Viduka's marvellous header. And then in reverse, Larson picking up from Baduka for the second goal. And at the end, the Celtic support is delighted that the Israeli international coming into his own in the penalty area, whereas outside it, he shows artistry, inside penetration, twice, once with a foot, and then eventually with a head. Although that was glided onto him by the Hearts goalkeeper. So a handsome win for Celtic. It may have been more. And Hearts perhaps fortunate that at the end, it was Celtic 4, Hearts nil. John, it looked comfortable in the end against Hearts. What was your impressions of the game? I was pleased with the way we went about it. We created a lot of chances once again. Um, but although in the second half, <clears throat> we were 2-0 up for a long while, and while the score remains 2-0, if they get a goal back, although it didn't look as if they were going to, but if they do, then it can be a bit hairy. So I was, I was relieved when the third one went in. But in saying that, we still created a lot of chances and could have scored more. You said before, when you come to the Rangers or play against Rangers and Celtic, you're playing against better quality players. So the one thing you must do is you must lift yourself to go and compete. That we were we passed the ball around OK at times today, but really we were second best in the, in the vital times, and uh, you, you can't really afford to do that against Rangers and Celtic or they get punished. Ah, it's a good result. The team played very good today, I think. A lot of movement, a lot of one and two touch, and then uh, I think we, when we play like that,